Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Today's programme is a colourful collection of practical demonstrations and exercises to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So settle back for 60 vibrant minutes of all the latest creative tips and techniques from some of today's most popular leading artists. Let's get started and take a look at what's on today's packed palette. I'll be giving you some simple step-by-step -step tips and techniques to paint your own watercolour animal portrait as part of today's Try Your Hand At project. Our resident bookworm Henry Malt will be searching the SAA Art Library to recommend another inspirational read. Spellbinding SAA professional artist Sharon Hurst conjures up another magical art by project. And we'll be showcasing the works of versatile SAA professional artist Clive Riggs in our regular introducing feature. And Jeremy Ford demonstrates how to give your pastel paintings the perfect professional finish. But before all that, let's take a closer look at the wonderful world of watercolours in part one of today's Try Your Hand At project. And I'm going to show you how to paint a stunning animal portrait. Let's get started. Okay, so we'll start by mixing a few colours then. Just put a little bit of water in the palette. This is kind of a black and tan dog, so we need a good natural grey. This makes the process a bit easier. Try and avoid paints grey, it's a little bit too um, black really. This is a slightly more muted grey, which is a lot better. It's quite a strong mixture though, that. We'll start with this. Second colour I need to mix is a bit of a uh, natural yellow, which is a sandy colour. And we'll use some natural yellow, fairly pale. That'll give us the tan colours. And I will use a lighter grey as well, so I'll put a bit more water just at the side and get myself a slightly paler grey. I'm using a size 8 brush for this. I'm working pretty dry as well, so a bit of kitchen roll or tissue is ideal for this. I'll start with the dark grey. And where the dog, the Jack Russell puppy, sits on the actual ground, I'm just going to add a bit of a shadow under there. I'm going to go in and use the point of this size 8 brush. Otherwise, no point in doing it. And I'm going to work across and build it up a little bit. And I'll do the same on this side as well. This will give ground to the picture. And then using a bit of water, dabbing on tissue so it's not soaking. And a bit of a diagonal brush stroke, I'm going to pull out the grey and make it blend as something is sat on the ground a drop shadow will always occur so it's very useful whether you put a background on or not it still works clean brush again just to make sure it's a nice smooth transition all the way to nothing make the whole thing soften away there we go and then just put a few little flakes up with the dry brush because that will give you a little bit of a hairy edge, which of course is important for the uh, animal hair. There you go. So straight away you can see it, it's grounded. And then we'll start to pull in a few lighter shadows around the area. So using the lighter grey, there's a definite shadow that will always go, always go under the neck, jowls, and it will come down. Quite a definite shadow as well. And it will work its way underneath. This is a bit like a negative painting situation because it's putting the shadow underneath and making the head actually stand forward. So a little bit of a negative painting thing going off there. And that looks a little bit as though it's got like a collar on, but when we clean the brush off, dab it on tissue once or twice and pull that away, that's when it starts to become part of the actual hair and creates a bit of a shadow effect. You can see the head is standing alone at that point. And then I'll use the same grey to create an edge down that side. And also we'll jump over to this side as well and create a bit of an edge just there as well. Clean brush, wipe it on tissue and then just use the water again. Try and follow the contour, that makes sense. Follow the contour of it. It really does help to give you that impression of it being a round paw so you can drag the brush strokes in the direction of the muscles etc. There we go so already you can see it's created some kind of shape and I'll drop another shadow just on this side as well so it's coming down from this area from the jaw into the mouth not literally in the mouth and just bring it down and again clean brush 
tissue and blend. This is like a wet blending, but it's not overly wet blending. The main thing to do is make sure that all those lines disappear to nothing. So you can almost see that nice shape starting to form there. Just going to drop in one or two more shadows on this side as the kind of creases start to appear. A little bit down there as well. A bit of war paint there for you folks. Clean your brush again, wipe it on tissue, and then just make all those become soft. It's almost like using a pencil. I always say if you hold your brush right on the end and rest on your paper, it just helps it control the pressure a little bit more and it gives you more of an, uh, an impression of the uh, blending pencil effect. Okay, so that's starting to form a little bit. I'm going to go slightly darker with the grey, put a little bit more of the darker grey into the lighter grey. And There's one or two slightly darker shadows to pull in this one. There's one down the side of the pore there. And again, if you put them on a bit of a diagonal flick, it gives you a natural edge, like an L shape there. Clean brush, wipe it over tissue, and then pull that away. But another important thing to do at this particular point is to make sure it all fades completely up the back of the pore there. Two or three times in the water, and you should be starting to see this thing completely disappear to nothing. There we go. You can see how that's starting to stand forward now. Excellent. And I'll use that colour again, maybe a touch lighter. I've just dropped a bit of water with it. And just putting one or two shadows to represent muscles and things around this area. Coming down the opposite side, a bit of a V shape. And then there's one that comes down the opposite side of the pore there. Dogs quite often have like a bit of a sort of gathering of hair or fur in the centre there. So we're going to bring that through as, as well. And then do the same clean brush over the tissue and then make it all fade completely away. So obviously this part of the dog is actually um, white. As you blend away, just start to use a slightly drier brush, a few more dabs on the tissue, because what that'll do is that will give you a bit of a texture to the hair. And that's what we're trying to achieve with this, if possible. So that's starting to do its thing there. There's a bit of a crease just coming around there. And then I can probably just imagine putting something down that area as well. Clean brush again on the tissue. And then scribble it away. This way it will give you the fur again, or the hair, the hairy texture. There we go. Okay. So that was a size 8 brush. I'm going to move to a size 6 brush just so I can get a little bit more control over this. And a nice dark grey, very thick natural grey. Just going to put a little tiny bit of natural yellow in there, just a tiny touch, just to change the colour to make it a fraction warmer. And then we're painting the dog's nose. So we're coming down. And almost, actually, to start with, Best bit of advice I could say, because most dogs' noses are, are similar, either brown or black you tend to find. And if you work around the edge, but make it thicker at the bottom, make it wider at the bottom there. Clean brush, dab it over tissue, and then pull the colours into the nose. This will help to make it look as though it's wet okay it's giving the light and dark shades there's enough paint there to blend so i can just basically make sure i'm not left with an outline it's all blended into the center there if we get a little bit more dark and just put the sort of bridge clean brush give it a bit of a squeeze folks squeeze everything out of it lay the brush flat and just lightly wipe away can you see it's lifting a bit of color off there just wipe away the bridge and then come down the centre. It's creating a little crease there. And the nostrils, which will be darker, I could just put a little bit of light underneath those if it lets you. Don't worry if it doesn't let you because you can always come back to this and wash it off afterwards. And then using a bit of a dry brush again, a damp brush. I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, flicking back. Very dry at this point though to make it work. So that's starting to attach it to the actual area. 
and the same colour can be used for the sort of bottom lip there. I don't want too much on the bottom lip, just a little bit. It tends to go up a little bit in the centre. That puts a nice smile. Clean brush again on the tissue and I'm just going to soften some of the edges and make it look a little bit of a hairy top lip because let's face it, all dogs do have one of those. And then if we dampen, just where the whiskers are popping through and use the same dark and very, very carefully put the little spots which they always have around that area. So I've got little paint on the brush and just dabbing it in and you can see it's starting to create that little effect of where the whiskers are coming out. Very thick grey, extremely strong grey and just go inside the actual nostril which is a good place to be and then just work it down like a bit of a sort of mirror image of each other these are. Very very dark, clean brush again, wipe it over tissue pull it away and then I'm just going to drop in a bit of a line down the centre there so that's starting to give us the actual um, mouth and nose area it's working pretty well I'm just going to drop in a few little tanned areas this is using natural yellow we can go straight in with natural yellow for this and there's a few little bits and bobs there's a bit that comes down this side there on the opposite side, it's almost a match. And there's a little bit around the eye. And then we've got the same on the other side. Just around the top of the eye there. Clean brush on the tissue there. And then just use water to soften all that in. And then also going to put some of this into the ears as well. There's quite a bit in the ears there. Clean brush again, wipe it on tissue. I'll try and think of a name for this dog. I think at the minute it's probably Patch. Let's do the other side. That's the bit that folds over there. Clean brush again. So it's all about the blend and you can see that. And then give it a bit of a bit of a soften. Make sure all these bits are blending into the required areas. If you use a really pale natural yellow, it's nice just to put a little hint every so often on the other areas because although it's a white dog in that particular place it's not necessarily pure white so a little skim transparent glaze of natural yellow is always good on something like this because it bridges the two areas together quite nicely and then just finishing this section off with a very dry brush and kind of pinch this and this has got grey on pinch your brush and just slightly start to add a few little bits of hair and fair and using the texture of a dry brush without over processing, without overcooking, keep looking back at it and thinking does that area look a little bit flat? Okay I'll put a bit of dry brush on it. But one of the great things about the natural grey and the dry brush is you can always reactivate it and soften it in if it's looking a little bit uh, rough. But I think that that's probably a good place to finish part one of that painting. Well folks, while we leave that to dry, it's time for a quick break now, but join us in part two when we go cover to cover with our resident bookworm, Henry Malt, as he searches the SAA Art Library for another inspirational read. And spellbinding SAA professional artist Sharon Hurst pops into the Splashy Paint Studio to conjure up another magical art bike project. See you soon. <laughs>